Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. It's Patricia and Darlene this morning. Our, our fearless third of our trio is out in California, but we have a wonderful guest today, Sarah Ann Jordan, who is a firefighter here in Hopkinton. So I'm looking forward to chatting up with you and learning more about you and what you're doing and all about, all about Sarah Ann Jordan. I'm excited. Absolutely. So did you, um, when did you know you wanted to be a firefighter? Uh, when I was little, my yeah. uncle was on the department. I always kind of like, like interested me. And then uh, like high school, I started hanging out at the fire department. I was like, yeah, this is, really? this is where I want to be. You knew it early on. Yeah. That is so awesome. How do you prepare for that? I mean, do you, do you study certain things in high school and college? Uh, tell us a little bit about your educational track. They, um, they have college courses. Um, a lot of people get their like, bachelor's in fire science. Okay. Um, I actually went to school for criminal justice. Uh -huh. Did you go to so, Northeastern? No, I went to Becker. Yeah, and, uh, Okay. Becker decided, and Worcester. Yes, in Worcester. Mm -hmm. I decided that wasn't the route that I wanted to go down. Okay. Um, but then you just, I mean, you take a civil service exam if you want to get on like a big city department, mm -hmm. um, like Worcester, Boston, um, some of the bigger, like Lowell, um, can't think of who else has, but it, it puts you on a list. Mm -hmm. And then uh, really the only thing you can do is just, just kind of apply and eventually go to the fire academy. Okay. Um, either full time, which I went through for Hopkington, okay. it's a nine week program. Mm. Or you can do a call academy if you get on a call or volunteer department, mm -hmm. which is <coughs> six months. You've done both time. too. Wow. I, did, I did both. So I mean, honestly, you, 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 when you, now in Hopkington, you are fully vested into the whole educational process, you know, and really hitting the ground running. Yeah, yeah. Because you're young. I mean, are you even 25? <laughs> I'm going to be 32 next week. Oh, oh my God! Lucky <laughs> <laughs> well, you. She looks like a lucky I'll, I'll take, take the compliment. I'll take you. <laughs> and you've been with Hopkinton for two years now, I had right? to be two years in August. And, and you worked as a firefighter before Hopkinton? Yeah, I was uh, a call firefighter in Boylston, okay. which is up by uh, Worcester. But you know, like at the risk of stating the obvious, the, the unique situation, you're a woman firefighter. Are there any other female, there are no other fe female fighter fighters in Hopkinton, right? Not in Hopkinton, okay. no. But are you seeing that in the field? What are you seeing in terms of trends for women firefighters? Um, you're seeing a lot more women in the fire service. Um, I, know, I know we do mutual aid with Ashlyn, and Ashlyn has several women firefighters. Ashlyn left. has uh, two. Right. Full timers. Um, one's a lieutenant. She's That's pretty cool. And is there anything um, different for women going through the process and/or being a firefighter? You know. Uh, I just think the way that uh, like some of the the older gentlemen look at women in the fire service. Mm -hmm. But um, with no, I think physically you have to do all the same yeah, demands. Yeah, physically oh, it's okay. the yeah physically it's the exact same. We're held to the same standards as okay. all the guys when you take your uh, your PAT for the civil service or to get on the department. There's no you got to do this in so a minute and a half. So you you do it in a minute and a half. Okay. Like you got to lift 50 pounds. You got to lift 50 pounds. Okay. So wow. But you're in better shape than a lot of firefighters I see too. <laughs> <laughs> I think with the the younger crowd coming in. Yeah. It's really ham like hammered on you that physical you wanna, fitness is physical is, yeah we have a lot of firefighters dying from cardiac arrest at uh, a young age like, okay. so very important I mean I grew up in a firefighting family and I was always surprised the amount of firefighters that actually smoked mm. and things like that and I think that's died down now yeah but it was that I they just said you know that's what we do we, we eat and we smoke and we did and stuff that I never saw, but I mean, most of my relatives that are in the, my, my uncle was the, the chief in Natick at one point, mm -hmm. and um, I have probably five or six relatives in Maryland that are firemen. So my son at three started collecting fireman's patches, and we started visiting firehouses, and I always thought he'd be a fireman, and um, he's not, but <laughs> it's, he still has a collection of probably, I don't know, a couple hundred fireman's patches. Yeah. Sarah, what do you enjoy most about being a firefighter? Cool. Just what personally, do what do you enjoy most? most? Um, I just like being out there in the community, being able to 
you know, lend that helping hand. Like, mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to go to someone's house or, you know, at a car wreck and just be able to give them that little bit of, like, all right, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Like, so. Reassurance. Yeah. So actually, in terms of your work, it, you know, I'm always reminded, it's not always chasing fires or, or responding to fires. It's a lot of other stuff. No, unfortunately <laughs> for us, we don't see many fires, but fortunately for the community. Yes. Um, <laughs> a lot of it is medicals. Mm -hmm. So probably, I'd say like 80% of your calls are, are uh, medicals. But right now, there, there's actually a high chance of fires. Yeah, right now it's... I mean, yeah. we're at high risk for <clears throat> fires. I mean. Last week, Car Carboni's had a fire. Yeah, we this year just even like um, I think we lost like two homes statewide. There's been fires are up. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think we lost two homes in Hoppington already this year. Lost fires. Them. We had really? uh, like devastating fires, mm -hmm. like Oakhurst Ave. Like, yeah, we had that's one up by that my was, house. I think last fall. They just tore the house down. Yep. Yeah, and then there was one uh, two like within the last couple of months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I don't remember the road it was, but single family house. Yeah, and I mean, it's one of my biggest fears. It's yeah. like, you know, and when they go, when the alarms go off, it, and it's usually something like burning in the toaster oven and, and stuff, but I freak. And to the point where I actually have night terrors where I think I hear the alarms, mm. I think I smell smoke and I run around it. And then Michael's like, you're dreaming again, you're dreaming again. <laughs> and stuff Because it really is a panic inside of me. <coughs> oh. It's scary, it's devastating, you lose Everything. everything right and yeah. it doesn't have to be a a huge fire to lose everything mm -hmm. smoke damage alone and water damage will yeah. yeah my cousins had a fire in their house when um i was a kid and their father was the captain of the fire department down in baltimore and it was from christmas lights like along yeah. the like back window and like a comforter hit it and it the kids oh. were in bed like it, the right. way they were, they had put them around their bedroom window, and it's like these little things that we don't realize of like what we create of our own hazards over plugging in stuff and exactly. Well, our our smoke dis detectors are so sensitive. Same thing if something is burning a little bit or whatever. But we have to do we have to open up every window and the doors yeah. and stand there and fan things, you know, to get it to shut off. It's I think we usually invariably it happens over the holidays. <laughs> you know, we've got a, the house full. Everyone knows what to do. Grab a window. Grab a door. Here we go. Stop everything. Yeah, so. fire prevention has come so far within the last couple of years with detectors and like the safety features that lights have to have and appliances have to have. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. Absolutely. So in Hopkinton, um, are you doing like those 24 hour, 30 hour shifts or do you, how do you plan your life? I know the, sh the it's. The schedule is different than a normal job. Every it's week not a nine to five, is it? It is, it is <laughs> not. We, uh, we work 24 hour shifts. Okay. Um, we have four groups. Um, that work 24 hours, mm -hmm. um, so you're you're broken up. You're always on your your group. So you always have the same crew you, you work with. always have the same. Yep, five guys. Mm -hmm. um, so we work 24 hours, and then we have a day off. Mm -hmm. and we work 24 more hours, and then we have a few more days off, and then we come back and start the whole process over. So it is a rotating schedule, but it's not. It's a, a consistent rotating schedule. So this right. week I work Sunday and Tuesday. Next week I'll work Monday, Wednesday. So 24 so, hours. Being, do you have to stay up 24 hours, or what does that mean? No, we can mm -hmm. we can sleep at night. We have okay. we have bunk rooms. Yeah. Um, it's at, at the station at right the station. next door. Yep. And stuff like that. So you like it's not like you go home to Auburn and then they call <laughs> if there's something. No, new. no. I come in at seven in the morning and I'm there until seven the the next morning. Yeah. You've got um, your bunk and meals are there, just like. Yep. We uh, we movies. cook breakfast and dinner together and. Uh, is it true about the food in the firehouse? The people are usually a good cook, and there's some good food going on. My group has has a couple of good has cooks. Still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you one of them? I am. Oh, me, okay. and, uh, me and Patrick do all the cooking. Oh, so do really? you have special okay. things that people like? Yeah. Or? What do people? What's the faves? Uh, we are a big fan of shepherd's pie. Okay. Okay. So that seems to be a big hit on my group. <laughs> so that's so yeah, just life in the firehouse. That's so interesting. So we just came off of the you know like the whole, you know, Boston Marathon, everything else. Were you involved in all that? Uh, yeah, they, uh, it's, the whole department pretty much gets involved whether, you know, you're on shift or not. Um, we call in other towns mm -hmm. to help fill the station so we can do calls throughout the town. Mm -hmm. um, and with all the roads shut down, we have ambulances right. staged in certain parts of town because you can't get down Hayden Road Street. Right, right. And you oh, can't get down 
sure. East Main Street. Mm -hmm. So we have to have town. We have to have. I wonder because I saw that and I thought maybe there was some issue, but that was probably staging. Yep, it's mm -hmm. just just staging throughout the town. Yeah. Um, so then you work like cooperatively, like probably like the police and the town manager's office and things like that. So they all know where everybody is and. Yeah. So uh, Chief Clark, the marathon ends and he's basically in meetings again for mm -hmm. the marathon the next year and it's just a year long of planning with you know chiefs from the surrounding towns and you know state police and mm -hmm. so this was your second marathon this was my second marathon yeah uh -huh. is it exciting or is it it is uh the first year was was very exciting it was yeah. a lot with the added security yeah right so right. it was a little overwhelming this mm -hmm. year was not as exciting just because of the weather Right. We didn't see oh, as yeah, much yeah. people bitter, come into uh, town. Yeah. It was cold. bitter, cold. disappointing. Yeah. We were out there, but it was I mean, cold. Yeah, and we were was. out there all weekend. Yeah. And it was, it was beautiful, beautiful until the weekend then. until the very I got, day. I got my confidence speed, my 26.2. Yeah, you know, I didn't and wear mine, but I speed. love mine. It's not yeah. fun, but it's such a happening. It seems like the entire community, whether it's municipal resources to Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, everyone is out there lending a hand. And what they said, something like 6,000 volunteers. Thousands of all oh, they turned no they turned Lord. away like three or four thousand. I forget the number. But it's a huge. huge amount to just make something like that happen and yeah. know that like people like the fire department are pretty key roles in all this. Absolutely, we had guests in from out of town that, that enjoyed it and they were out there in the rain with us. It was a lot. It's of fun. it's a fun day and it's yeah. I mean it's one of the biggest events in the year like countrywide like right. The Boston right. Marathon's the biggest marathon in like, the country. Yeah. In the country, and it's the most historic it, marathon in the yeah. country. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's so exciting. We're so, so thrilled to host it here. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, Hopkinton is a, is a unique place, as is everywhere, in terms of yeah. our own little uh, so, traditions. <laughs> so now you live in Auburn. I do. I live in did Auburn. Did you grow up there? Or? I did. I grew up in Auburn, lived in Auburn. Okay. Did you have um, kids, married? Ella? No kids, no married. I, uh, my sister has three children. Mm -hmm. I have two nieces and a nephew. So you're, so you're getting your fill at yes, the moment. Yes, that <laughs> is my fill for children for now. Yeah. Okay. So very good, very and, good. Um, so is anyone else in your family like involved in fire departments and things like that? Except your, your uncle. Just my uncle. He's a call firefighter mm -hmm. in Auburn, and so he must be pretty proud of you. Yeah, I. I you know what your like family think, think so. about your your vocation, what you're doing. Um, they they're supportive. Sure. They're. I'd like to think that they're proud of me. My. You know, yeah. they tell me that they are. I'm sure. Um, there's always that worry. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I would think there's always a concern. You think about the, like, even the kids that go into the service and things like sure. that. Sure. That risks. You know, you become mm -hmm. a police officer or a firefighter. You know, sometimes if you go in the service, it's actually almost less of a risk. You know, you signed up for three years. These people have signed up for the their career. Exactly. <laughs> to help exactly. other people. Thirty more years. Oh, <laughs> Awesome. Oh, that's great. It's funny. My uh, my nieces, they already think they're firefighters. Like, they've got the bug. Yeah, they they have it bad, and they've had it. Well, you're probably so. you know so hiring a lot of women, young women. I like to think um, so. How, Absolutely. How old are your nieces? Um, Ashlyn is four and a half. Uh, Brogan is two and a half. Great names. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have a nephew, Finn, who oh, is. Oh, really? One and a half. I love all those names. <laughs> yeah, right. Very Irish. Finn Brogan, and what's the first? Yeah. Ashlyn. Ashlyn. Oh, very nice. So, yeah. um, mm -hmm. talking about young girls and aspiring, I know that my daughter's applied for something that you're actually a counselor at, and that's Camp Bailout. Yes. And um, so what's can Camp you share about what about? Camp Bailout yeah. is? Um, so, Camp Bailout is hosted by the Ashland Fire Department. Mm -hmm. um, it's a camp for young women. Um, we teach them firefighting skills, uh, we have an EMS day, mm. just to teach them about the, you know, the field that we're in, mm -hmm. and it helps them build confidence, teamwork, leadership. Wow. Um, is it for a day or? A it's, uh, it's a, a week long. It's, it's a whole week. It's uh, Monday okay. through Friday uh -huh. during the so day. sleep away, stay over camp. No, but it's just during the oh, day. Okay. Um, they get dropped off at, it's either eight or nine, and they get picked up at three or four. Okay. Um, and each day is a different skill set that we introduce them to. We do uh, like ladders, we do mm -hmm. search and rescue with them, wow. we show them the boats, okay. we have um, an EMS day where we go over the ambulance, we teach them CPR, the uh, life flight helicopter from UMass comes in and gives them a tour and teaches them all about that. Wow. Uh, 
It's a pretty physical for the girls. So they get um, into not that really. A bit? It is. It is. It is a little bit physical. They are, you know, hoisting ladders, mm -hmm. using so. fire hydrants. If, if my daughter's accepted, I want her tired. Yeah, no, <laughs> she'll be tired. She'll be tired. Um, but we try, we just try to keep it fun, relaxed. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know. So how many girls will be in the camp? Do you, you uh, last expect? year we had, I think, I think twelve. Well, that's so a nice number. Mm -hmm. it, and one thing that's actually really impressive about this. Um, and I hope Melissa gets in. So anyone else trying to apply? This camp's 100% free. Really? They do this for free to teach girls confidence, you know, life skills, wow. and really being, you know, self-sufficient and resources that, it, whether they decided they wanted to be a firefighter or anything, these are skills they can take with them forever. Well, actually CPR and just being safety conscious and knowing what to do in certain situations, I mean, that's gotta be and a yeah, wonderful experience. Honestly, you know, someone like Sarah Ann and the Lieutenant in Ashland and the other ones are great young heroes for our girls and yeah. stuff like that. You know, there are so many the girl, women in the media, I don't want my daughter being a hero too, and I would love Sarah Ann to be her hero regard the, than Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you get a chance to speak to schools too, or something that, because um, I know firefighters are, you know, are often, you know, magnets for students and Yeah, we have, trips um, we do tours mm -hmm. of uh, the fire department. Yeah. Um, the younger kids come in. Scouts um, and stuff yeah, like Boy that. Scouts, right. Girl Scouts. Uh, last year we took uh, a truck and an ambulance to a couple of the daycares in town. Okay. Yeah. So, and you just let the kids play on it, show them that, you know, we're just... We've actually had, at one of Andrew's birthday parties, it might have been his third or fourth, they actually brought the truck and ambulance to our house, mm. let the kids climb on it, oh, play sure. on it, go through it. It was a you know, we gave them all the plastic hats and it was part of their party. I know the kids from center school walk down yep, and the, visit it. Yep, they walk down uh, and we, we teach them stop, drop, and roll. Oh, that's um, right, yeah. We get dressed up so they can see that in look my really gear I look yeah. funny, but I'm just a person, so if right. something, they see and that, that they're not trust scared. You. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, um, yeah, I mean, the unique thing, too, is you guys still do mutual aid with other towns, and there's still volunteers and call firefighters in Hopkinton, too, right? Um, yeah, we have, uh, we have a couple of call, call members. Um, we do go mutual aid. No. Um, I know some of the, like, I think Holliston and Sherborne are a lot more call than full-time. I, mean, I grew up in Ashland, and outside of, like, the chief and one other person, the entire fire department was volunteer at that point. Wow. To now and Hockington was too, to really where we are with technology and where the needs are, where the population has grown in this community, to having each other's backs. I mean, when they call it like a multi-call fire, like Carboni's was. Yeah. I, I know that means other towns. So each call means a different town came in? Yeah, so they're, they're called alarms. So okay. the first alarm is gets you We'll say an, an engine, a ladder. Mm -hmm. We don't have a ladder truck, so Ashland comes. Um, it gets us somebody from Milford, uh, South Bro. So when they say three alarm or four alarm, so fire that just fire. means that mm -hmm. is just how many engines, ladders, like a second alarm you need. So it doesn't mean how many towns are involved. Not necessarily. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, it just is the amount of resources you have coming in. And let uh. me ask you this, sort of to clarify: when you say volunteer fire firehouses or fire volunteer towns, do we mean, let's clarify, we, do we don't mean unpaid people as, nope. as fire? No, they're unpaid. Yep. Okay, there's, really? There's okay. Um, volunteer, which is you're volunteering your time. Okay. Um, there's call, which okay. you get paid either like hourly per call or per call, it depends okay. on how the department is, and there's, you know, the full time. Right. But a lot of departments now are combination paid yeah. Call and volunteer. Now we have friends who are who are retired from the Worcester Fire Department, and he the um, they talked about volunteer, like volunteer firefighters as a category of firefighters versus appointed or something. There's a yeah. difference category, but it what didn't mean unpaid. I was just confused a little. Oh bit. yeah, no, there's no like in my mind, there's no difference. If I'm getting paid and you come and you're not getting paid, mm -hmm. there's no difference. We're mm -hmm. doing the same exact job. Yeah. We have to have the same skills to be on the department. Okay. Um, yeah. The same, you know, the same training or very similar trainings. Well, you're all unique 
individuals to go running towards trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, the, this compelling passion to help is, is a wonderful thing. It absolutely is. I think in our travels, as like we've taken Andrew to different firehouses to collect patches and things like that, sometimes firehouses will be totally closed. And those mm -hmm. are more the volunteer houses that uh -huh. an alarm will go off and they'll come running in. Mm -hmm. So we have it. And then there are times where, you know, there, most of the time there's someone there and they bring you in and whether or not they have a patch for them, they all have a different story, they have a different tour, they have something they share that he, that we, as a whole family, have taken out and learned going yeah. to these. And we've been to them literally in all different parts of the country, different parts of the world. Uh, like maybe we make that actually one of our priorities is to stop at the firehouse and learn about that That's one. And so kind of thing. So, yeah. you know, I, we've been at the Chinatown one, which lost a lot of firefighters in 9-11. We've been at the Worcester one that lost, you know, Captain McGurk, which was a friend of ours. And, mm -hmm. um, each one has a different story where they're specialized. They're the one at Lake Consuit Consig has so much more water stuff and mm -hmm. yeah, every every department you go to. But it's they're always well. You know, sometimes you like you realize, my God, that we just woke this guy up who's probably worked all night long, and he still <laughs> welcomes you and come in. I don't have a patch for you, but here, have a T-shirt. Here, <laughs> have you ever seen this? We just got this new truck, or we just got this new, and they take the time and they realize that they are part of this community. Absolutely. And you know. We're pulling in with an out-of-state plate, and they're still like, come on in. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we like to say it's, it's your firehouse. It's not ours. It's yeah. Doors always open. Yeah. Right? We love to have people come and just, we'll talk all day. <laughs> we'll come for shepherd's pie. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> just bring us in. Yeah. Yeah. Shepherd's pie. That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, so it's springtime. I'm so, I'm just like giddy like everybody else is with the weather and uh it's prom night tonight which we you were talking with you about just before we went on the air of uh that this incredible tradition here in hopkinton so it's new to you it is relatively new to me. so uh, i know you know barring any emergencies the, the fire department's probably not called to grand march but uh, i don't i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> but it's certainly something we're checking out you are Anybody? No. No, Andrew's, Andrew's problem was last year, right. and it's, qu it's quite the show, the Grand March. Um, his, he's going to a girlfriend's prom. He's right. a senior this year. But so. seniors, they, do they still do senior boat crews? Yeah, that's yeah. two days before graduation. Then we have senior recognition night. That we, but now we also have a mother, we have a parent-child like dinner dance. Oh, And that's right. at Gillette Stadium. That's, we did that So too. we have that yeah. coming up mm -hmm. in two weeks. So and graduation parties and we're like all balancing these things off and exciting year and, and, you know and talking about like emergencies the, the scariest thing is like when you hear these things of kids like it's a week before graduation it was graduation night and all these accidents that happen and it's like Andrew you're <sighs> not going out you're not doing this it's like you guys <laughs> are safe because you got part of it is I don't think sometimes that they're drinking or right. anything like that I sure. think they're exhausted right oh, and people be. don't realize it's like <clears throat> You, you just pulled a 12-hour day for graduation and decided to go hang out at your friend's house at 1 in the morning. You're tired. Right. <laughs> they say uh, if you're up for 18 hours, it's the same equivalent as being drunk. Yeah. Like for like yeah. your reaction time for driving. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. it. And that's, that's more what I'm concerned, <clears throat> you know, with them running around to all these different events. It's yeah. like they're Plus, exhausted. Yeah. You know, and yeah. They, you know, these kids leave the house at 640 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, then by the time they come home, they go to a part-time job, do homework, and things like that. They're going to bed at 10, 11 at night and back at it again. I'm like, oh, my God. It's a long night tonight. So when they come back from prom, they're still doing the overnight thing probably at the high yeah, school. Yeah, Andrew didn't do that last year, um, but I know a bunch of his friends did. And I know my son, when he did it, he curled up somewhere at you know by 2 in the morning and found a place to sleep for the rest of the hours because he was exhausted. Yeah, I know that you, you know, know we're looking at graduation weekend, and it's like, non-stop of like things and you know my husband works retail so to tell him like you got to take the whole weekend off we've got court of <laughs> honors for e friends that are becoming eagle scouts we have another kids party we have this and stuff so uh, it's just tis the season busy time of year it's busy time yeah. of year we've got election we just finished town meeting yeah How, well, marathon well not quite a marathon but three days three nights worth well actually we closed at 1201 so it was, it was technically, technically four. a fourth day, oh, and okay. you know, election is on Monday. We've got a contested race for Parks and Recs. We have contested race for um, school committee. Right. Um, you know, um, got some wonderful volunteer write-ins for a couple of things. Uh, um, we, uh, okay. I know Connor Deegan is a write-in for Housing Authority. So am I. Yeah. Um, with the Democratic Caucus, um, I'm running for 
Library Association, but I'm running on a post, right. um, under the Democratic Caucus. So, I mean, it's kind of a neat time, and it's always like a regeneration of what's going on in town. Exactly. And, you know, just a real shout out to those who are stepping up to volunteer in the, these important committees and, uh, you know, commend you know you Darlene for for doing that and, and another shout out to a young person getting involved Connor Deegan who um, is, is looking he's been be interning at the um, town yeah, hall which exactly. is actually really cool and you know is, is a young person who wants to understand government I mean what a wonderful opportunity to work with Jerry in the town clerk office and really see how government works in a, in a small town there's a lot going on and you know I really admire so many kids who often major in political science are looking to do policy or kind of, they think big, which is great, but you can see a microcosm of that work if you get involved locally. And, uh, you know, young people you know, need to do that more. And then we have someone here yeah. who's giving to the community every, every day, day that she's here. Yeah, for 24 hour stretches. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I, and I think sometimes, you know, you go in and you know you're, you're giving, but that there are other times you go in there and it's heartbreak. Yes. And, yeah. you know, how do you like, are able to brush that off and go in the next day. I think that would, that's got to be hard. It's some some days are harder than others, um, but you know you have your family at the fire department to support you. There's resources outside of the fire department that is mm -hmm. great, like to reach out to. It I, has been wonderful getting to know you, and now that I've we've met, I'll probably see you around town or be able to give a, a wave to the fire department. Hopefully. So. And so appreciative of you here yeah. and, you know, supporting our community. Absolutely. Thank you for but, me. but thank you. Thank and, you. Um, thank you for being here. Have a great here. week, guys. Thanks thank for joining you. us, everybody. Thank Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>